Hey guys, it's Serena. Welcome back to the channel and welcome back to Mom Talk. Today we're going to be discussing Korean moms and how they approach discipline. And of course, we have our lovely mamas here again. Hello. Welcome Hi. back. Hi. So we have Joyce and Sue joining me again. Um, let's get right into it. I think first we should talk about uh, the differences between uh, old school Korean style of discipline versus the discipline that we see uh, with modern moms these days. What were some of the <laughs> old school ways? Well, by old school, you mean like how our parents right. sort of disciplined right. us yeah. when we were growing up, right? What were some methods they used? Well, I think one common method, and I'm sure you guys will both agree with me, is that when we were growing up, we were often or usually like hit, spanked mm -hmm. for misbehavior. Right. So if you either did something wrong or you went against something your parents wanted or didn't want, mm -hmm. um, then you were, as a result, you were spanked for it, right? Mm -hmm. yes. Um, yeah, so I grew up, anytime I did something when I was growing up, did something bad uh -huh. uh, or did something wrong, my mm. mom was uh, ready, you know. <laughs> As was mine. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Spanking is definitely common in the Korean household, or was common in the Korean mm -hmm. household. Mm -hmm. um, growing up in Canada, I mean, spanking is obviously very discouraged. Um, so it was just very hush hush, and it was only talked about in the home. Right. Um, but yeah, I think everyone that I knew who was Korean Canadian. I got spanked. Um, <laughs> how did you guys get spanked? What were, what were some ways <laughs> that you were spanked? Well, I think my mom was actually, when I think, when I think back, mm -hmm. um, it, was, it wasn't too bad. Mm -hmm. I mean, whenever there was some negotiating involved. Oh, so wow. if, I were, if I did something pretty bad, yeah. she would say, how many hits do you think you deserve? Oh, so she right. would kind of me leave too. it to me, I hate to no. that right? Because then oh. how am I going to say I, I want I wanted None. to say zero? <laughs> but if I, I say I zero, I never got that question. Really? No, I never think got I any did. Uh, options. Eh? No. <laughs> so she would ask me, and I would usually go for like somewhere between five, uh -huh. like four or five, uh -huh. Uh -huh. and then she would usually agree, and then she would use like this wooden spatula, mm -hmm. I guess, mm -hmm. and hit me on my calves. Uh -huh. So if it were four, just yeah. four times, and that was it. Yeah. So it wasn't anything like just you know, out of the blue or she would get really upset mm -hmm. and angry, just pull something out and start hitting me. Mm -hmm. It was like, you know, it was, it was set. Mm -hmm. We defined how many, you know, we kind of negotiated how many um, times I would get hit and then it would happen and then it would be done. Mm -hmm. That's it. Mm -hmm. I can tell you're such a good daughter because you viewed that process as negotiating. <laughs> I, I got that sometimes with my mother. She would be really mad about something and she would say, like, how many slaps or whatever, uh, you know. <laughs> spanks, <laughs> hits, spanks, hits, yeah, you know, yeah, do you yeah. think you deserve? And I never thought that was a negotiating process. Uh -huh. I considered that as part of the threat. Uh -huh. And <laughs> the only thing that was long and hard would be used to spank me. Yeah. But my mother, um, she would always remind me that this was the way that all Korean kids mm -hmm. were disciplined. Mm -hmm. And I needed that, I suppose, because I, I grew up in a society, or not in a society, but in a town where it was predominantly white mm -hmm. and there weren't many Asians mm -hmm. to begin with. And there were pretty much no Koreans. This mm -hmm. was in the like, early 80s, mm -hmm. you know, there weren't any Koreans there. Uh, in London, of course, they have a lot of Koreans, but then I moved out of London. So there, there was it's just me, really. And so every day, I was faced with the dilemma of, like, what do I do with this seemingly violent mother yeah, <laughs> who says yeah. this is the normal way of life for a Korean who I have never met before, and, you know. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that was a sort of very frightening process for me. Right, right, right. Um, I also think with um, Korean, well, old school Korean moms in spanking, they typically do use a tool. It's not right. just, I don't really yeah. remember my parents like slapping me with their hands. Right. It's always like for us, I think a common one was a coat hanger. <laughs> <laughs> Something on those lines, me too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and then, you know, they would have like a set number in mind. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So spanking, yes. another one. Kneeling. Yes. Wurukki okay. is what we call it. Yeah. So basically you're just kneeling on the floor until 
your parent says stop. Yeah. Right. No, but, but you then, have to have your arms up. Well, sometimes you do, but oh. even the kneeling itself. Oh. Do you know how much it hurts yes. after yeah. that? We used to do that all the time. Yeah. And I think that was an alternative to spanking. Yeah. Sometimes you had both. So if you're really yeah. bad, there's a combination of the oh, spanking and the kneeling. Mm -hmm. right. Other times it was just the peaceful kneeling. <laughs> um, my sister and I were actually, we, we, we got that a lot, yeah. especially when we didn't speak Korean. So my mom mm. wanted us to speak Korean in the house, right. but we obviously were more comfortable with English. Mm -hmm. But right. because she wanted us to learn the language, she made us speak Korean to each other. Mm -hmm. And if we didn't, she'd make us kneel right. and raise her hand. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So if you watch like Korean dramas, mm -hmm. you'll see sometimes you see kids or mm. students in uniforms, they're like kneeling right. and they hold a chair up. Yeah. Or they're yeah. holding books up, and I guess yeah. that's just to make you more tired right. and make yeah. it more difficult, right? Yeah. But um, the pain doesn't, it's not as painful when you're kneeling, it's when it's done, right? When, when right. it's done. Because you get cramps and, right. and you can't uh, stand up. Mm -hmm. You get up, that's when the blood starts flowing, and <laughs> oh. it's like so painful. But that's yeah. one of the ways, yeah, we also got in trouble. Mm. Yeah, it's, it's actually quite creative. Who, who thought of that, <laughs> right? <laughs> um, I think another popular one is. Um, I'm going to just say it in English first. It's letter of apology. <laughs> yeah. Did you write any of those? No, I didn't. Oh, but okay. At school in England, we uh -huh. had detentions uh -huh. where you would have to write out what you did wrong. And that's okay. similar, I think. Right, yeah. 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 In Korean, yeah. they're called pansongun. Yeah. And uh, we used to write them all the time. Mm -hmm. So after you know everything has calmed down, mm -hmm. Then you know my mom would be like, "You need to go to your room mm -hmm. and write a letter and explain you know what happened, what, what you did wrong, okay. pretty much apologizing mm -hmm. for what you did." Um, and yeah, I actually kind of use that method with my son now. He's right. he's seven, um, and it I think it is a little effective. Mm -hmm. It is effective because it uh, requires you to think yeah. and sort of realize what happened. Right, right, right. But right. it's never pleasant writing. Right, those, yeah. yeah. Um, anything else? Old school me, ways? In line with the Pansongmun thing, although mm -hmm. I was never told to write out what I did wrong, mm -hmm. I had Korean textbooks always ready for me to study with because mm -hmm. I have educators in my family and you know, so they would send over textbooks and my mother would sometimes as punishment say, write from chapter 1 to chapter 10, you know, <laughs> that would be my punishment. So I was made to forcefully study uh -huh. and write out whatever uh -huh. was, it was just copying, you know, and writing out. But that was punishment for me sometimes. Mm -hmm. And looking back, uh, first of all, I would be very angry. I didn't know what I did wrong because mm -hmm. I really wanted to know, especially around the age of 10, you start to question, what did I do wrong? Mm -hmm. Why is my mother being like this to me? But then I'd be stuck writing these literature works and, you know, <laughs> and that just added to my frustration. Mm -hmm. yeah, yes. So mm -hmm. I think from a very early age, mm -hmm. I was determined that when and if I ever became a mother, mm -hmm. I would explain to my child mm -hmm. what on earth they did wrong, <laughs> yeah. and I would never hit them. Yeah. So I would make sure there was a distinction between doing something wrong mm -hmm. and the rest of the stuff you do in life. Right, right, right. I think that's also a huge difference between um, the old school style of discipline. Uh, our parents, I think it was the way they communicated was very one way. Right. They yes. wanted to just tell us what we did wrong and what should be done to correct that, but there was never really any back and forth communication. No. And I think yeah. uh, their method sort of was to fix the problem immediately. Mm -hmm. So yeah. if something was wrong, they would point it out right away yeah. mm -hmm. yeah. instead of letting you realize what maybe give you some time to realize or, you know, throwing certain. Uh, just saying something to you to make you think mm -hmm. and realizing what you did and perhaps give a chance to apologize before things got a lot worse. But mm -hmm. I think with our parents, you know, as soon as you did something wrong, they let you know right away and they right. try to fix it mm -hmm. by, you know, either hitting you or giving you certain punishments. Mm -hmm. Yes. That's yeah. very different from today, I believe. Right, right, right. Um, spanking isn't as much uh, practiced nowadays. No. Um, let's talk about some modern ways that uh, Korean moms approach discipline and not just for yourselves but like some things that maybe you guys have observed. Mm -hmm. Do you think that you see a lot of spanking? I don't think I see not too so much. much spanking. Mm -hmm. I mean mm -hmm. um, even in schools mm -hmm. it's no longer allowed. I right. mean they used to hit children quite a bit in schools yeah. especially in high schools mm -hmm. right? Back yeah. in the day. Because I went to high school in Korea mm -hmm. and you know from the very easy uh, hitting hands with rulers to sometimes slightly more hurtful things. <laughs> <laughs> it would be perfectly normal mm -hmm. for the teacher to do that. Right. And it was even called 사랑의 <gasps> which translates to 
the stick of love. Oh and my that's what goodness. they would call it. And they would I'm have serious? a stick in the classroom and the teacher would be like, okay, it's now time for me to display my love to you because you did this wrong and that I love you so much that I'm going to correct that behavior. And then, like, you, know? <laughs> you know, that reminds me because my mother used to always end off like, if I used to get hit, she mm -hmm. would always say, you know why I'm hitting you. It's because I love, <laughs> I you. love you. Right? Yeah. If I didn't love you, yeah. I wouldn't take these measures to correct you. Mm -hmm. And I do it because you're mm -hmm. my daughter and I love yes. you and I need you to be a good person. Mm -hmm. And so she would always say that, reassuring mm -hmm. perhaps not only myself but herself that Okay. What she's doing is okay. Mm. I mean, mm -hmm. I don't know. I just, yeah, that, that happened. Too. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think just thinking about the moms that I know, mm -hmm. uh, maybe out of a 10 moms, like one mom actually spanks their child. Right. It's right. not, yeah, common, it's not these common these days. No. Yeah. Um, what else? I think grounding. Grounding was very popular among my friends mm -hmm. when I was growing up. Right. Do you see a lot of parents grounding their children? I guess, in Korea. I guess because our kids are quite young too though. Right. Mm. I think the closest thing to grounding would be taking away privileges. Right. Yes. So yeah. grounding to me when I was younger mm -hmm. meant growing up in Canada meant like you weren't able to go out with your friends. Mm -hmm. um, you weren't able to watch TV for a certain amount of days. Right. Um, but that wasn't we didn't have that when we were growing up. I'd be like, I'd love to get grounded instead of getting hit. You know, like that'd be so easy. Mm -hmm. But uh, here in Korea, I don't see very many kids getting grounded. Yeah. But I do like I mean myself as a parent, although my son is young, mm -hmm. um, I do take away certain privileges if it's right. connected, if it's related directly to what he's getting in trouble. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, so, I mean, I think they do do it, but it's more like taking away privileges. Right. And I think that's really important. Like, uh, if you do end up using like the method of grounding, mm -hmm. it should be very close or related to what the child has done. Right. Right. Yeah. Um, there's grounding. Also, I think um, Korean moms these days, they're just so much more, um, I guess they read a lot of parenting books. Mm. Uh, there's a lot of like resources online and videos and things like that. So they are definitely a lot more aware of that. And I, I definitely see yelling, but I think deep down inside, the modern Korean mom doesn't want to yell and they right. know it's wrong. Right. Yeah. Yes. Um, I think you might agree with me when I say that a lot of couples, mm -hmm. like mothers and fathers, yeah. they, there's a difference in parenting style where a lot of dads are sort of old school still. Yes. Mm -hmm. And the moms, maybe perhaps they read more of these books or talking more yeah. with moms or yeah. with the child yeah. more, yeah. that they try to follow these different ways to discipline children. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, because my husband and I, we often disagree. Mm -hmm. So he thinks, you know, spanking is still okay if necessary. Mm -hmm. I feel like it's not very effective at all, mm -hmm. even though we both had been hit when we were growing up, right? Mm -hmm. yeah, so it's, yeah. a, it's a little different and we don't yeah. agree all the time. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, so I think that's quite common with mm -hmm. couples too. I think just fathers, they know themselves. <laughs> and <laughs> they feel like maybe boys are, well, I mean, boys are very different um, from girls. And I think with girls, maybe talking is just, it's, it's easier for them to understand. Could be. Um, and I don't know. It, I feel the same way. My husband believes that spanking is okay, but of course it's not something that he would do regularly, mm -hmm. but it would be just for something like an extreme situation. Yeah. Um, but he has mentioned to me before that he wants to have like a sort of best friend type of relationship with oh, yeah, my son nice. eventually mm -hmm. when he grows up. So um, he does, you know, he doesn't want to be like a violent father, right. or, you know, so it's just really for something that's completely like extreme right. yeah in my case I don't live with my husband we live in different cities mm -hmm. so I'm responsible for like 90 yeah. percent yeah. of yeah. my child rearing and so in that regards I think it's good because even though we have differing opinions because we're not physically there with mm -hmm. our children mm -hmm. I can do things my way <laughs> yeah <laughs> just explain to my husband mm -hmm. that this is how mm -hmm. I spent the week yeah we meet almost every weekend sometimes yeah. once every fortnight and then I'll just tell him that this is how things are done around here. <laughs> and he's very nice, you know, he's very yeah, accepting, yeah. although it's so different to the way he was yeah. raised. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. That, yeah. Right. Um, yeah, you need that communication with your partner, mm -hmm. right? Um, you somewhat want to be on the same page mm. with certain things. And I think it is like the number one, probably number one or number two uh, topic when it comes to like arguing. Yes. Uh, fighting, sure. yeah. things like that. Yeah. So, um, are we missing anything else? I think another thing is like a lot of uh, Korean moms are really good to like, they're quick to praising their kids 
mm-hmm. for good behavior. Mm-hmm. Right. And that's another form of discipline. Right. Yeah. They use a lot of reward charts, mm-hmm. right? So oh, they okay. have, so you get stickers at home yeah. uh, when okay. you do certain things you have to do. Mm. Much more than allowance, I think, especially for younger children. Mm-hmm. Uh, when I was growing up, I felt like a lot of my children, my friends mm-hmm. were rewarded with allowance. So they do certain chores. Mm-hmm. Um, if they follow the routines, mm-hmm. then they would get the allowance at the end of the week. Mm-hmm. Um, for certain things, they might get a cut in like, you know, not as much as they usually, usually would if mm-hmm. they got in trouble. Mm-hmm. Right. But here I find that rather than getting, you know, money, money. they get stickers as mm-hmm. rewards. And if they collect like 10 or 50 or however many, they, mm-hmm. they get to have a toy or they're rewarded right. with something. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. What do you guys think about that method? Um, I find that my son really likes it because mm-hmm. he's still young, but I try not to really use it because mm-hmm. I feel like, um, you know, once again, it's like extrinsic motivation, right? Mm-hmm. So you're doing mm-hmm. something in order to get something, right. not because this is the right way to act mm-hmm. or the thing to do. Mm-hmm. So I don't really use those that much. Yeah. yeah. Um, also adding to the extrinsic uh, motivation, I think for old school parents, um, they use fear mm-hmm. to basically mm-hmm. control right. the child. And so right. I think children just behave well because they're scared of their parents. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So is my life, really. <laughs> <laughs> the thing is, I was always very well behaved. Oh. And so if you look at... I can't imagine yeah. you getting like, into so much no. trouble. So, like, really? No. Um, well, that's exactly my point. The thing is, what I was spanked for mm. was never for getting into trouble at school or doing bad Mm. with my studies. It was normally the way I spoke to my parents. It was all about this um, hierarchical structure Mm -hmm. and Mm -hmm. how I wasn't being Korean enough. And you know how it's really vertical, or it used to be more so Mm -hmm. when we were growing up. And so my mother, I think, you know, it sort of boiled down to how I was being a bad daughter to my mother, I think mm-hmm. that was the main reason. Mm-hmm. And if I had any questions, like um, not just questions, but yeah. and if I questioned my mother right. about her actions, right, right. that was just unacceptable. And then I would get spanked again. You know, yeah. like, don't ever question. Mm-hmm. You know, an adult. That was mm-hmm. what I was always told. Right. And mm-hmm. so I think even the nature of what you're being scolded for has yes. changed a lot these days. Right. Absolutely. Okay. So that is kind of my next question. Um, let's talk about our personal experiences and what were some of the things that your parents couldn't stand about you <laughs> and you got in trouble for the most? Well, I think uh, kind of similar to Sue, mm-hmm. whenever, like my mom hated the talk back, uh-huh. right? So if she too. would say something and I would have some sort of snarky <laughs> <laughs> comment or reply, yeah. like right away I would get in trouble for that, mm. not the actual issue at hand. Uh-huh. So uh-huh. it's sort of like the focus became on like me being disrespectful uh-huh. and me being rude. Like mm-hmm. how can you talk to an adult like that? Exactly. Mm-hmm. You know, that would never happen in Korea. Yeah. I could never talk to my mom like that. And I would always be like, but we're in Canada. Mm. Mm. And I don't understand why, you know, you're upset Mm -hmm. about something like this. Mm -hmm. And that would just cause more trouble. Mm. So if I wanted to avoid that, I would just really just, as soon as she got upset, would just be like, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. Like, that's my fault. Like, I'm not going to do that Mm -hmm. ever again. But she really disliked the talk back. Yeah. um, Which I think is, you know, kind of unfortunate. I think as long as you're being polite, Mm -hmm. there should be room for, you know, sharing your opinion yeah. or asking questions or asking like why on earth yeah. I'm in trouble for something which I don't think is such a big deal, mm. right? Of course the parent, um, hopefully they know what they're doing, but they should be able to answer those questions and explain, right? right? But oftentimes there wasn't even a chance to do that. So the main thing was for me for getting in trouble was talking back. Mm-hmm. Um, another thing was like just having bad manners, right? Like right. being rude, which is kind of along the lines of talking back. Mm-hmm. And uh, the last thing was probably like not doing what I was supposed to do. Mm. So like I used to play piano and uh, if I didn't play piano, I wasn't allowed to, back then it was talking on the phone with your friends, right? Mm -hmm. So I wasn't allowed to talk on the phone. If homework wasn't done, I wasn't allowed to talk on the phone. Uh So all of that had to be done before Mm -hmm. I could do the next thing. Mm -hmm. And if I didn't, and I was like sneaking away talking on the phone, then Mm -hmm. I would get in trouble for Mm -hmm. that. I had a very similar experience. It's almost identical to your experience (laughs) actually. But the way I view it is now, when I look back, I think it was due to many different clashes of, you know, there's a generation gap, there's a cultural gap, Mm -hmm. and then my parents being the first generation of immigrants. We weren't exactly immigrants, Mm -hmm. but, you know, they were the first generation, in my family at least, Mm -hmm. to go overseas. There was all of that to deal with, Mm -hmm. personally, for them as well. So I think it was just so many um, confusions going through their minds. And my parents were young when they went to England. They were in their 20s. You know, to think about that now, I'm in my late 30s, and so 
I think 20s, early 20s or mid 20s is a really young time to have kids, move to another country, adjust to a new life and all of that. Yeah. So I think they got frustrated in their own way and that they didn't know how to get rid of that and, mm -hmm. and then not being surrounded by many other Koreans, mm -hmm. in my case, mm -hmm. I think my parents thought we're just going to go the conservative traditional way mm -hmm. and retain our Koreanness as much right, as possible. Right, for sure. But now I understand it, but yeah. it's taken me 30 odd years. Yeah. <laughs> Back then I was just mad because I was surrounded by all these kids who never got spanked, mm -hmm. who always had conversations with their parents mm -hmm. and they were best friends with their mothers. And right. I was like, and they could how, talk back. <laughs> yeah, how is that possible? Whenever I try to, you know, say, Mum, why do you think that way? She'd be like, don't ever question. <laughs> right. And so being raised in an English mm -hmm. community, but with a Korean mum, yeah. it was really difficult. Yeah, especially because you see that contrast yes. with your friends. Yeah. Um, I think also when my parents ever like give me questions, throw questions at me while I'm getting um, in trouble, they never want the real answer. No, no, no they no. never want the real answer. The answer is set. <laughs> no. You just have to say what they want to hear no. in order for everything to be over yeah, quickly yeah. And, and for everything mm -hmm. to sort of calm down. Yeah. Um, but going off of what Sue said, I think uh, this is not just for Korean immigrants, but mm -hmm. I think any immigrants, right? Like when you're in a new country, new culture, new language, and you're raising these children, there's a lot of uncertainty, right? But mm -hmm. you want to do a good job because you went there for a reason, right? Mm -hmm. You went there most likely for a better life. Yeah. So you want to try to do the best you can mm -hmm. with your children, but raising children is difficult. Yeah. And then there's the stress of having to adapt and um, find your way in this new country with right. this new language. Yeah, so I think yeah. there is probably, there was so much more stress mm -hmm. than what we, we have been dealing with mm -hmm. as parents uh, now. Mm -hmm. And we have so much available to us. We have tons of books, mm -hmm. online resources, um, friends, like the time yes. to meet up with friends yes. even um, and just to discuss, you know, mm -hmm. about raising kids, mm -hmm. things like that. So definitely my parents did not have that support system right. at all. Mm -hmm. And so you can only imagine what they went through. Yes. And of course, that just leads them to just be so much more desperate. Right, and I think that's why they had to do that reactive type of parenting. Sure. Mm -hmm. right. Yeah, um, I think for my parents, they couldn't stand a few things. <laughs> One was they really wanted us to not forget our Korean. Mm -hmm. So at home, we were not allowed to speak English at all. Right. So we'd get in trouble a lot for that. Um, I have a brother who's five years younger than me, but we used to fight all the time. <laughs> and so fighting was a huge thing. Yes. Um, but one thing I just look back now and just f feel very sad about was how my brother always got harsher punishments than oh, I did. Because he yeah. was a boy. Yeah, and I think that's actually quite common in uh, Korean families. I think if you're a boy yeah. or if mm -hmm. you're the oldest, mm -hmm. you get you know, the bigger punishment, yeah. right? Yeah, so yeah. like I have a younger sister as mm -hmm. well, so it was always, you know, I got in trouble first mm -hmm. and I got it worse, and then it was my sister's turn, mm -hmm. and then it was far less from what I remember. <laughs> <laughs> but she always yeah. said, you're older, yeah. so okay. you, you deserve to get hit more. Kind of thing. <laughs> okay. like it's your fault. Right? Because yeah. you didn't, um, you know, share with your sister, or yeah. as the older sister, you yeah. should have been more responsible. Right. So a lot of the blame was on me, mm -hmm. um, and I was pretty resentful for that. Mm -hmm. But I did understand because she was a lot younger as yeah. well. Mm -hmm. But yeah, you're right. If so you're there's boy, different there's different factors. Yes. So I guess the worst situation would be if you were the first son. Yeah, right. exactly. <laughs> yeah. yeah. for I mean, sure. Although yeah. I was scolded by my mother a lot. Mm -hmm. I was almost never scolded by my father, mm -hmm. but my brother, who's yeah. <laughs> also yeah. five years younger than me, yeah. I remember um, my father would spank him a lot, mm -hmm. and I felt like in terms of quantity mm -hmm. or you know, the frequency yeah. of being told off and being spanked, I had it worse, but my brother, because he was first of all being hit by a stronger adult, mm -hmm. my father, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. it got it worse in that regard. So yeah. it was yeah. a bit different. Yeah. Um, that has definitely even, that mindset has definitely continued on into my husband as well. Mm. Um, he loves both our kids dearly, but right. you can tell that the way he talks to my son mm -hmm. when he's getting in trouble versus my daughter is just so different. 
Yeah, he feels, I think he definitely feels the need to be a lot stricter mm -hmm. and harsher when it comes to my son. Well, I was talking to my husband about that. Mm -hmm. I don't have a daughter, but mm -hmm. he was saying how like a lot of the, the guys, mm -hmm. they are used to it from the military. So mm -hmm. they have military service mm -hmm. and it's very hierarchical. Yeah. And then it's like with, with guys, they just treat the guys a little differently. Mm -hmm. And then there's a lot of physical, you know, it's very physical as right. well. So, and their fathers were like that with them. Mm -hmm. So they're also like that with their sons. Yeah. Yeah. and maybe a little less with their daughters. Mm -hmm. So we just talked about uh, what our parents couldn't stand from us. <laughs> Let's talk about our kids. What do we get angry at our kids about the most? For me, it's not tidying up mm. after they That's play. a big one for me too. And it's on a daily basis, I have to remind my kids, after you play with your toys, uh -huh. put them away. Yeah. But I find myself repeating it so many times mm -hmm. that sometimes I'll just get angry on the first go of, you know, telling them off. Whereas I know inside I should just wait a couple of times, and, but I don't find myself doing that. Mm -hmm. You know, for me, it doesn't bother me as much. I'm not really a messy person, but when mm. I see like the messy desk or the toys all over the place, I yeah. kind of feel like, you know, even for myself, I don't feel like cleaning up every single day. Mm -hmm. You know, and I have a desk with all this stuff scattered on it because I work mm. from home oftentimes. Mm. And so um, sometimes there's a day where I feel like cleaning up, and I clean up everything and then some days I'm like I'm just gonna leave that there and come back to it later. Mm -hmm. um, of course children have much, much less to do and we're trying to develop, have them develop this habit of like tidying up mm -hmm. but you know it's not it's not enjoyable yeah. and uh, yeah. and sometimes I leave it and then I'll pick a day where we can all do it together mm -hmm. right oh. so you clean up your stuff I'll clean up my stuff mm -hmm. I'll do my desk mm -hmm. you do your desk and then after that let's let's play a game or, or do something. But can I just say something I know exactly why it's not a big deal for you why is that? Because <laughs> I have one child? No, it's because uh, it's because Joyce's son mm -hmm. doesn't really play with toys. Oh, okay. okay Whereas in our home, mm -hmm. we have tons of toys. Yeah. Um, my children love Lego, so you mm. can only imagine the right, the, right. the, the mess. Number of times I've yeah. stepped on Lego. Going, yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Here, <laughs> her son loves books. Oh, I mean, wow. how how messy can you get with books? Well, they can get messy when they're like scattered all over the place. But like, yeah, he doesn't. Oh my he, doesn't actually <laughs> play with toys. he doesn't play with toys yeah, very much. Yeah. He doesn't like Lego and bricks and, and stuff mm -hmm, like that. I guess that's mm -hmm. we can save that for another day. But like, yeah. it, it is true. Yeah. But he does love crafts. Yeah. So crafts, okay. like, okay, we have like glitter and like he cuts little tiny pieces of paper and has it all over the oh, place. Lovely. So I yeah. mean, I try to limit to a certain space. Mm -hmm. And then if it's on there, then I don't really care. Yeah, I let it yeah, be. Yeah. But anytime you know you're getting ready to do your homework, mm -hmm. or you have to use a desk, I always say like clean it off first, mm -hmm. and then when it's clean, then mm -hmm. you start doing your work, right? right so right, right. I mean, I do nag him for things like that, and mm -hmm. do get sometimes upset if I have to repeat myself over and over again. But mm -hmm. it's not something that really makes me angry. Yeah, mm -hmm. um, I think one of the things. And there are plenty but one of the things is manners but not in the sense of being proper mm -hmm. but more so about you know treating other people in a nice way being respectful acknowledging other people mm -hmm. um, so I think I want it's really hard don't you think that you there are a lot of your kids off for not doing that yeah uh, well I'll I think not I wouldn't yell at them about it mm. but it does bother me when for example like a big thing for me was growing up my parents used to you know get upset when I wouldn't say hello to right, other right, people right. Like, and you don't greet people no it's like annyeonghaseyo and then like 90 degree angle mm. bow <laughs> if it was like 85 degrees they'd be like push your head down, <laughs> like push your head down. <laughs> yeah um, I think maybe I might have gotten some influence from that mm -hmm. um, but you know just saying hello to neighbors mm -hmm. uh, saying thank you for things right. putting your plates away things like that and another thing is I don't know about you guys but like do you when you see sort of like a bad quality in your kids that you have doesn't it bother you so oh, yeah. much more? So for me and my husband, we're actually quite impatient. Mm. So it bothers me so much when I see my kids being impatient. Oh. Yeah. And so how do you go about that? I have a very well, impatient child as well, uh -huh. right? So my son is super, super impatient. He's, mm -hmm. he's really sensitive, so he notices everything. Mm. So he's very quick to react to 
to whatever he sees. Mm -hmm. And so I think he expects other people to be like that as well, right? Mm -hmm. um, so he's really impatient. He wants something. If he's like, for example, just something as simple as being really thirsty, he's like, mm -hmm. I want water. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, I don't have water right now. He's like, I want water now. And right? I'm like, I'm sorry, but I don't mm -hmm. have the water. So my husband and I, we purposely try to um, make him wait. Mm -hmm. So I mean, I could put everything down and run and run and get him a glass of water. But I'll say like, after I do this, and when I'm done, then I will get you the water. Mm -hmm. But I think it's something that um, is kind of similar with all children these days. The, the instant gratification, right? Mm -hmm. like think yeah. everything is like uh, when you have touch screens, you touch it, it reacts mm -hmm. right yeah. away. Yeah. You have these toys with all these buttons mm -hmm. and lights and yeah. sounds that. Um, they're just not used to waiting. Right, mm. right. And so I think my child is like that as well. Yeah. So when he keeps saying the same thing over and over and over again, when I've already explained that I can't do it right now, mm -hmm. that's when I sort of lose it yeah. mm -hmm. and get really angry and say, you know, you, ha mm. you have to wait. Mm -hmm. um, so that's something that makes me upset mm -hmm. and that I, we do, uh, I tend to um, get angry yeah. about. Yeah. And uh, what else do I get angry about? Another thing that's like a combination with manners and in impatience is um, my kids interrupting me when I'm talking to other people. Right. Um, and that, that really <laughs> bothers me. Mm -hmm. yeah. I think that's all children and it's yeah. really hard. There's yeah. just so many things that they want to say and it's, it's hard to hold it back, right? Mm -hmm. It's just like they, when you want kids to walk and they can't walk, they have to run. Right. Mm -hmm. It's the same thing when they want to speak and they want right. to say something, they mm -hmm. really can't wait. Mm -hmm. Just like they don't have a filter, right? Yeah. Like whatever they're thinking is just coming out. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's something that's, it comes with age. Mm -hmm. You know, once they get a little older, they become a little more patient yeah. and they're able to, um, you know, wait their turn. Mm -hmm and things like that, mm -hmm. yeah. I think my kids are a little better with the whole patience thing, mm -hmm. only because I was the only one around and I couldn't possibly do two things at the same time. Mm -hmm. So from a very young age, from, you know, before they were walking, my kids, I think, have gotten used to the fact that they <laughs> yeah. have to wait yeah. or else there's yeah. nothing. Yeah. There's no alternative. Right. And they're close in age as well. They are very right. close in age, sorry, 16 months. So um, I think I get mad at my kids when they're just messing around together. <laughs> they're just like friends. They're oh. not so much like, you know, an elder sister and younger brother, mm -hmm. which is what they are, but mm -hmm. they're just like friends. And so and a tag team. Yeah. yeah. They, uh, uh, have conversations with yeah. each other, they can plot things against me, <laughs> you know, so they'll be like, let's do this, and then so they get into oh, trouble so for that, but it is mm -hmm. quite cute, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, anything else that we can't stand over for kids? <laughs> Let it all out now. Well, for me, I mean, you have kids older than mine, so I don't uh -huh. know if the sleeping issue is resolved now, but uh -huh. my kids, they hate sleeping, so at night, I always have to tell myself, okay, today I'm not going to yell at mm -hmm. my kids, but almost every night mm -hmm. I have to yell and I end up mm -hmm. almost t forcing them to sleep mm -hmm. <laughs> because they just yeah. don't want to. Yeah. So that's something I, I get very mad at sometimes. Yeah. It will take sometimes like two, three hours oh, to get my kids to oh, sleep. Oh, I feel you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. I think they grow out of it a little bit. They do. They, older. they do. They start sleeping better. How old is your oldest one? Five. Five. Okay, no, they're gonna grow out of it. Okay. Yeah. And it is harder when they're together, though, though right? Mm -hmm. Like if you're yes, trying, to, like yeah. if you have one child and the mm -hmm. one child is trying to sleep, mm -hmm. it, it's quiet. There's no other distractions. Right. It's fine. But when you have two and they're giggling and mm -hmm. they don't want to sleep and they're like climbing on top of each other right. and stuff like that, that just takes a lot more time and their energy. Exactly. I think it's hard to calm down. Mm -hmm. um, so that's also, you know, the two of them being together mm -hmm. and then the, them being so close in age and right. then trying to put them to sleep at the same time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's got to be. I, I can't it's imagine. Very <laughs> but you know what's really funny is I live with my parents um, because of circumstantial stuff. About them. <laughs> but it's really funny that when I get mad at my kids, my mother, who was ever so strict with me, mm -hmm. she's like, "Oh, don't don't be so mad at the kids. You know, just let them be." Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, what? Yeah. <laughs> and so she helps to sort of lower my level of anger. Oh, well that's good. Yeah, that is good. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm so surprised it's my mother mm -hmm. telling me to not be so angry when I thought she was the strictest, scariest mother in the yeah. world. Yeah. No, I heard that when you become a grandparent, yes. it's just your grandkids are everything. Yes. You know, you're so much softer on your grandkids. I know, that's so mm -hmm. true because even now, I mean, just a few days ago, mm -hmm. I was told off by my mother for something I don't even remember. And she mm -hmm. told me off as if I was 12 years old again. <laughs> and the only way I know how to respond is to say, okay, I'm so sorry. And you know, that was it. Uh -huh. But then sometimes my mum will get a little bit agitated with stuff my kids do. 
And yet my children's responses, they'll just cr- climb over Granny and they'll be like, why are you being like that, Granny? And then, <laughs> and then she'll just melt in an instant. Oh. And, and I think she loves it. Yeah. So what I'm realizing now is my mum never really knew how to mm-hmm. properly uh, scold me mm-hmm. in a civil manner. Mm-hmm. And maybe she wanted me to be like my kids, Mm -hmm. which is like, they don't care if grandma's mad. (laughs) They'll just go up to her and hug her anyway. Right, right. And I was never able to do that. I still am not. Mm -hmm. Very awkward for me to go and hug my mum when she's mad. But my kids do that. And my mum loves it. Yeah. she'll just immediately, like, 180 degrees different. She'll be like, Mm -hmm. oh... Okay. Yeah, it's, probably, <laughs> it's probably because they're not scared of her to begin with, yeah. right? Yeah. For you, mm-hmm. I think you were probably always scared. So yes. underneath, like, there's this underlying fear of mm-hmm. your mother. So whenever she gets angry, like you don't want to anger right, her. Right. You just want it to be over quickly. You know mm-hmm. what she wants to hear, mm. and you you grew with that constantly, right? Yes. Whereas your children are really young still, right, and like right. they just see they just see grandma as a very loving, happy, yeah. fun person. Mm-hmm. So when they do that, they feel uncomfortable too, but they deal with it in a different yeah, way. Yeah, I think probably. they even think it's funny because mm-hmm. <laughs> grandma's never mad, and then just every so often, if grandma is mad at them, they'll be like. Grandma, you're so funny. What oh. are you doing? You look angry, but I know yeah. you're. You know, yeah. there's, it's this very different mm-hmm. thing I'm seeing yeah. at home. But I also think our parents realize a lot when they look at us raising our kids. Oh, yeah. Um, even for my mom, she, I think she thought of parenting in a very different way. Mm. And um, that's my next question. What do you guys think discipline really means? Um, I think a lot of uh, people think, when they think discipline, they think punishment. And I think that's what our parents yes. thought. But it's, oh. is it really punishment? I'd have to disagree. Mm-hmm. I think um, punishment is wrong. Mm-hmm. And the main reason is because in real life we aren't punished for things we do unless you break the law. Mm-hmm. So unless you break the law, um, you're not going to jail. You know, you're not going to get beat or mm-hmm. hit. Um, I think discipline basically is a way, it's teaching children to make good decisions, right? So you're teaching them how to make good decisions. If you make bad decisions Mm -hmm. or bad choices, Mm -hmm. if you make a bad choice, you're teaching them, you know, they have natural consequences. Mm -hmm. And from there, they're going to realize, okay, am I going to make the same mistake or am I going to make the same bad choice again? Or this time, am I going to do it differently and have they learn from their past behavior or mistakes? So, I mean, it's all about making good choices. Absolutely. And then yeah. parents giving them guidelines, mm-hmm. right? And then modeling the good behavior mm-hmm. so that children can learn from that. Um, because it's sort of an ongoing process, right? It's not like right. a one-time thing where you hit the, hit the child and mm-hmm. spank, like when we were kids. Mm. And then uh, once it's done, it's done. Right. right. I, th- I think this also ties into the relationship between parents and children in the past. There basically was none. Right, And so I think for my mother and me when I was growing up, it was all about keeping up appearances and making sure that we um, were well behaved, well I was well behaved on the outside and and my mother would feel a level of satisfaction or achievement just by having people compliment how well behaved Mm -hmm. her daughter was. And so I don't think my mother ever thought about the relationship between her and I. Mm -hmm. Whereas now, I'm, I'm much more about the relationship and I want to have this sort of parent, child, but also friend-like relationship with my child, which I never had with my mother. And I think it's a shame because now that I've come to the age where, you know, my mother isn't so strict, I realize she's just a vulnerable woman mm-hmm. like any other person. <laughs> yeah. And she would, I think, like me to be that friend mm-hmm. <laughs> that I do not know how to be with my mother. <laughs> And so, but my mother, we had this conversation a couple of years ago, it was a belated conversation about me growing up. Mm-hmm. And my mother said, the only thing she ever thought about was making sure that no one ever thought I was a bad person, mm-hmm. because that would ultimately come back to her. Yes. And that was the only thing that she ever thought about. She didn't think, oh, this is going to ruin my relationship with my daughter. Mm-hmm. Because there was no concept of a relationship between parent and child. You're right. And that is so important Mm -hmm. in uh, Korean culture. And I think it still exists now. Right. Um, It's actually pretty prevalent now too. Um, But it's just showing other people the good side of you. And um, again, how my parents were very strict about saying hello to other Mm -hmm. Korean people, bowing and things like that. And I don't know if that was so much about, you know, just 
teaching us how to treat other people. It was more just, you know, they wanted other people to know that, you know, we were very well behaved, just right. like you said. I yeah. think uh, one common phrase that a lot of um, Koreans mm. probably heard when they were growing up mm. is like, who's your father? Oh, right? yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's some like songs or some rap, rap uh -huh, music and uh -huh. titled, who's your father? Mm. Um, and basically it's saying like, if you do something good uh -huh. and if you do something to make your family proud, uh -huh. that's like raising your child successfully, yes. right? Yeah. If you do something you're, that's wrong or you're doing, if you have bad behavior, mm -hmm. you're bringing shame upon your family mm -hmm. and then they want to know who your father is yes. right so that they can you know talk about mm -hmm. you know, this father mm -hmm. who didn't raise their children properly exactly. mm -hmm. um, just going off of your question what discipline is mm -hmm. I think uh, a big part of it is self-control mm -hmm. right so learning to control yourself mm -hmm. and uh, I talk about this with my son all the time we talk about um, things that I can control so mm -hmm. we talk about like you can control your behavior um, your actions, your words, mm. your attitude, these are things that I can control. And then we talk about things that we can't control, right? Oh, like, like the weather, mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. time, mm -hmm. other people's attitudes, other people's words, things right. like that you can't control. So we talk about what's appropriate and how we can control our, our actions mm. so that we can make good choices and have good results from that. I love that. And uh, yeah, mm -hmm. and I think at first he wasn't really understanding it, right? Mm -hmm. But I always tell him whenever he's in trouble, I mm -hmm. guess, with me, I tell him like my job and daddy's job is to help you learn to make good choices. Yes. And it's okay to make mistakes. Right. And everyone makes bad choices, but we learn from them. Mm -hmm. And and that's that's simple, right? My job yeah. is not to scare yeah. you and to, you know, to hit you, mm -hmm. right? And have instill this fear. Mm -hmm. It's pretty much to help mm -hmm. you make good choices. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And and of course, just instilling that fear. I mean, you're only with your kids for so long. Mm -hmm. Eventually, they're gonna they're gonna go live their own life, right. and you have to guide them and teach them to be independent and mm. that I think that's a huge part of discipline is just to get your children to think independently yes. and also um, make wise decisions on their own. Yes. Right. right? Yeah. I think that reflects the societal change from being a member of a group and always trying to make your family or your community mm -hmm. proud to now being much more individualistic and it's about making the right decisions, how to make decisions and also being responsible for your own actions and that I think is what parental discipline is all about mm -hmm. and I always think of that when I uh, tell my kids off, I think I am ultimately trying to guide my kids so that when they're older and they're in their 20s or 30s and older they'll be able to make good decisions in life whatever it is mm -hmm. you know and also know what the consequences will be if even if they regret it and make mm -hmm. bad mistakes take responsibility and so it's all about them mm -hmm. it's not about do this so that I will be proud <laughs> <you know? laughs> or our I society love that tone. will be proud yeah, because yeah. I think that's that was what it was for me right. when I was growing up. And I had having, to make everyone proud. Yeah, and having that complete control over your child. Like, mm -hmm. if you don't do this, yeah. you don't get to do this. Mm -hmm. if, if you don't do what I say, well then, that's too bad for you, yeah. right? It's yeah. like um, you already telling them what the consequence will be right. as a result of not doing mm -hmm. what your yeah. parent mm -hmm. wants you to do, right? I think that that's what's changed the most. Yeah, and so I had a lot of difficulties in my 20s uh, making my own decisions about just everything, you know, from school, what subjects I'm going to take, you know, mm -hmm. where I was going to travel and things like that. I because your approval. mom had, your yeah, mom had helped Exactly. You. Mm -hmm. I needed approval from my mother mm -hmm. for everything I did. And, and I realized this is not how I'm going to live for the rest of my life. And so from then on, like from my 20s, I started reading books, you know, and I was like, how am I going to make decisions in life? But I feel like with the right discipline, mm -hmm you can prepare your child to do that without having to belatedly go mm -hmm. through these uh, you know, life coaching books, mm -hmm. which are still good, yeah, but, yeah. but you know, yeah. you'll have that within you and not make the same mistakes that I maybe mm -hmm. made. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, another form of discipline that I think a lot of people maybe just um, don't think about too much is as parents, we always want to be like an active participant in our children's lives. Mm -hmm. But I also think that allowing certain natural consequences to happen is another form of discipline, yes. just kind of not just hovering all the time right. and trying to teach them things. Sometimes yeah. not teaching is also a method of teaching. Oh yeah, yeah. definitely. 
um, a lot of times, I mean, the consequences don't have to happen right away. Mm -hmm. I think when we were growing up, they were immediate, right? right. Um, oftentimes, I don't have the right response or I haven't thought of the consequence that I want to give to my child. Mm -hmm. And I'll say, you know what, we'll talk about this later, mm -hmm. right? And so I give myself a couple of hours if I need, mm -hmm. or maybe I'll, I'll let it slide and then I'll talk about the next time the same thing happens before I allow it. I'll say, remember last time what mm -hmm. happened? That's why this time we're not going to do it. Right. And then he'll realize, oh, Okay, so I'm not going to do that next time. Yeah. Right? So it doesn't have to be immediate, uh -huh. right. but in order to do that, you have to be really patient. Yeah, right. Exactly. And you have this fi <laughs> this fire. You know, it's, mm -hmm. it's just this. You you want to explode. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But you have to really just like take a deep breath mm -hmm. and just calm down and mm -hmm. say, okay, I need time to relax and time to calm down before I'm going to talk about this again. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm perhaps even talk about it with your husband before mm -hmm. deciding what would be the best way to talk to your child about uh, what has happened, right? Mm -hmm. uh, this is one book that I really like. It's called um, Parenting with Love and Logic. Mm -hmm. And it talks a lot about natural consequences and um, just really, I guess, letting the child learn from their mistakes, mm -hmm. right? And, the, and a part of it is these mistakes that they make when they're young are far less costly than making them when you're 20 sure. or 30, right? Mm -hmm. So you let them make these mistakes, you let them realize what's going on through natural consequences mm -hmm. so that they learn from them instead of the mother saying, this is exactly what you did wrong and right. as a result mm -hmm. you're going to get grounded for five days or you're right. going to get mm -hmm. five smacks or whatever. <laughs> yeah. So this is a great book that I, um, it's always on my table, I look at it almost every week just like for mm -hmm. different tips and stuff like mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. I actually browsed through it a little bit and uh, it has a lot of like practical situations like yeah. there it's very yeah. specific and mm -hmm. I love that so yes. I'm gonna have to bo you look at it every week so maybe I can't borrow <laughs> it but I can lend it to you. I mean one thing that I find with I mean there's so many parenting books out there yeah. and uh, so much information even mm -hmm. online mm -hmm. that um, when you just look at the theory and the methods mm -hmm. it's really hard to apply to your day-to-day -day life. Oh yeah. Right. In the heat of the moment mm -hmm. it's not like okay step one do this step two. <laughs> it's, it's really difficult so for me, what I find really useful is just pretty much trying to memorize specific lines to use, mm -hmm. right? And when you memorize those lines, uh, in that moment you use those lines, that's right. when it's most helpful, mm -hmm. yeah. right? So I usually kind of make a list mm -hmm. or a mental note, mm -hmm. or I highlight words that I like and yeah. I want to use because mm -hmm. those are not I, they're not natural with me, right? right? So then I try to memorize them and then use them and I find that most effective. Okay, let's talk about some effective ways of discipline. What has worked for you? I think, again, in the long run, mm -hmm. talking to kids, explaining to them why you have to do certain things or why this is not a good idea is way more effective. And I've seen this with my kids over several years. At first, you know, it takes time mm -hmm. and a lot mm -hmm. of patience. At first, they don't get it and they'll make the same mistakes over and over again. Um, like, for example, my youngest used to have temper tantrums when he wouldn't get his way and mm -hmm. he started speaking a bit later than most other kids and I think because he was late in speaking the only way he could express his frustration was by screaming mm -hmm. and so he would do that a lot and then even after he started to speak he still had the habit of screaming and yelling and all, all of that so uh, the fastest way of getting rid of that would have been to scold him and spank him and that I think would have had an immediate effect mm -hmm. but because I have my own experiences to reflect upon and books as well. Um, I decided I wouldn't do that. Mm -hmm. And so I would explain to him and I would say, please sit down with me and look at me in the eye, tell me what's wrong. And at first it wouldn't work. For I think over a year it mm -hmm. didn't work. Mm -hmm. you know, he would just sit there and continue screaming. <laughs> but now it's been several years. My youngest is three, going on four. Mm -hmm. He's so good with that. Whenever he gets frustrated, and it's taken years, but now, already at the age of four, if you think about it, he will say, Mom, I'm really mad about this. Mm -hmm. And instead of yelling, he will just explain, even though there's a bit of anger in the voice, but that's fine, you know, it's just human. And I'm so happy that yeah. I waited that through. But yeah. it just takes a, a lot, lot, of, patience lot of patience and effort. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I do think that the most effective methods are just something just something that you do it's kind of small involves a lot of you know honest communication mm -hmm. and another thing is just um, being able to connect with your mm -hmm. child is really really important you were talking yes. about just talking to them about emotions mm -hmm. and how he expresses how he's really angry about something right. um, one of my favorite books is uh, no drama discipline mm -hmm. and in that book they talk about just really connecting with your child and asking them what they're feeling mm -hmm. um, in that moment 
Yeah. yeah. And then, you know, talking about ways to do it. But oftentimes, we're just like, no, you shouldn't do that. Yes. Yeah. Right? And that is the easy yeah. option. Yeah. It's, it's yeah. so simple and it's, it's quick. It's easy, but it just works at that moment, yeah, I think, exactly. right? I think a lot of times it really depends on the age of the children, mm -hmm. but uh, when you ask them what's the matter, they really don't know. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they really don't know what the yeah. problem is yeah. and they don't have the words for it. Yeah. Sometimes right. they don't know the names of the emotions either. Right. So when they're younger, I think it's important to help them identify these feelings, talk right. about what what's the name of this feeling. Mm -hmm. right? yeah. Yeah. Um, not just mm -hmm. sad and happy, but mm -hmm. there are so many feelings, so many emotions yeah. that talking about those, acknowledging them, even playing games and reading books to help them mm -hmm. give words and names mm -hmm. to the way they feel. I think yeah. That's really important. Mm -hmm. um, and we really worked on that a lot because my child is very emotional, he's very yeah. sensitive. Yeah. And so, you know, uh, he just has big, big, big emotions. Mm -hmm. right. And so, working with naming those emotions and acknowledging them mm -hmm. and having that connection is key, mm -hmm. I think, as the first yeah. step. Um, one thing that really does not work uh, for us is timeouts. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you guys use them. It's a very mm -hmm. common way, even in school. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, you sit out of the circle, you sit out of the classroom, you have time to yourself to think and to reflect. Mm -hmm. My son hates that. Mm -hmm. So as soon as I say, go to your room, he'll immediately start crying and freaking out. Right. And he asks me, why do I have to go to my room by myself? Mm -hmm. I don't want to go by myself. I need a <laughs> hug. He always says, as soon as he's getting in trouble or he feels like he's in trouble, he says, can you give me a hug? Mm -hmm. Which I think is like, instead of a time out, these days they talk about time in. In, right mm -hmm. yeah and uh, I do see why they're going with that approach mm -hmm. so when I say okay you know he needs a hug give you a hug and uh, you know just sit there or you need time to think mm -hmm. but I don't necessarily physically remove him and say go sit in your room and close the door because mm -hmm. he really hates that mm -hmm. he's, yeah. I guess he's scared or yeah. he just really yeah you know, time out is kind of like a gentler form of us kneeling with our arms <laughs> <up>. <laughs> telling, yeah. telling us to think about what we've done painful, right sure. but when you're, I mean, think back to those days. Do you ever think about what you've done wrong and, no, you know? it just gives and, me more time to yeah. vent in my head yeah. about my mother. Exactly. <laughs> to be more resentful, sometimes even revengeful, right? right. Like, yeah, I, right. I'm like really angry. And just being sort of passive aggressive, it never really actually mm -hmm. comes out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and I think to that extent, I probably, you know, like all three of us, we probably really weren't that bad, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. While growing up, but yeah. like I would have these thoughts in my mind and be like, I hate you. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like just wait till I get older and you know, run away. You know, you have no me. idea how good I feel about myself now because I thought I was the only daughter in the world who oh, had no. these bad thoughts oh, in my head. No. For sure not. So I think just that situation <laughs> itself, it's like when somebody's forcing something on you mm. and telling you you need a time out go think about what you've done I mean that just like that does not set the tone for right. you know mm -hmm. reflection mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, it's true so like timeouts don't work for us yeah. but uh, the um, sort of writing I get mm -hmm. my son to mm -hmm. write once everything has calmed down mm -hmm. I'm like I, I want you to write um, a page about what you think you know what happened today mm. and the mistake that you made and what you're going to do in the future right. so that that same mistake doesn't happen again or mm -hmm. if you're in that situation what are you going to do to make it better next time right so then after he writes that um, of course you know I don't I overlook all the spelling mistakes and all of that right, right. <laughs> I don't comment on that but I'll be like okay so yeah this is exactly what happened today mm -hmm. next time what can we do to avoid it or to make it better you know right. what are the whether what, what are the other options that we have mm -hmm. what are some of the solutions mm -hmm. and kind of get a little bit more um, kind of analyzing the situation mm -hmm. I yeah. find that's so much more helpful Absolutely. than to then to be a one-way mm. sort of um, just getting in trouble yeah, yeah. similarly I try to follow a sort of three-step process when I tell my kids off. So what I'll do is I will explain as best I can why this is wrong, why I'm unhappy, and I'll just treat my kids like a grown-up and I'll just logically explain what mm -hmm. was wrong. It's not easy and it's very cumbersome at times. Yeah. And I try not to get carried away with my feelings, but that's the first step. And then after they've listened to what I've had to say, I will always thank them for listening. And then my third step is I'll say, so tell me what you'd like to say about this. And sometimes I'll be like, I don't have anything to say. Yeah. But then sometimes they will have something to say. Yeah. And it might not even be related, but just giving them the opportunity to mm -hmm. say something after they've just been told off, I think um, it makes them understand that this is not just an angry thing that mummy is doing, yeah. but there was something wrong and mm -hmm. I would like to have a conversation about it. Mm -hmm. And so it seems to be working well for me. Yeah, um, I think when 
kids are a lot younger mm -hmm. sometimes they need to be uh, guided so in in like a tough situation where they've done something wrong um, I think instead of asking like a, a very open-ended question like what should we do when this happens again yes. right. maybe give them a few suggestions mm -hmm. be a little bit more specific mm -hmm. right. yeah, yeah for, for sure. alternative solutions instead of just you know reacting in a bad way. Yeah. yeah, and some of those things are actually in, in the book that I brought with mm. me today. This is a Korean book, Ooh. so unfortunately mm -hmm. I don't think it's been translated into English, uh -huh. but the title is 엄마의 말하기 연습, which means practicing speaking for mums, yeah, something like yeah, that. Yeah. And so it gives really specific examples of things that traditionally mums would have said, uh -huh. like for example, why did you make the same mistake again? Uh, Don't do this. Uh -huh. Instead of saying that, specifically tell the child what they did wrong. You have put your socks out you know, <laughs> on the floor again. You, know, you have to just explain very specifically yeah. what it is. Yeah. And I would like you to put them in the washing machine. Mm -hmm. So you give really specific directions and also what they did instead of saying, why did you do this? Because yeah. like, kids often don't know why they did something. <laughs> so would you say this is applicable to like your spouse, your husband? <laughs> <laughs> Sounds better. <laughs> it's like, like Nampion, right? To your husband. How does he I mean, I don't know if in English speaking cultures this is the same as well, but in Korea, wives often mm. say that husbands are just like, Sons. Is oh, this yeah. the same? Is it uh, universal? I, I see similarities for sure. <laughs> okay. I don't think it's a universal thing. Or maybe it like the feeling is kind of universal, yeah. but nobody really says like, oh my husband is like a third child or second child or something right, like that. Right. I don't know, I've never Korea, heard. They do. It's very common. It's in very Korea. common. Yeah, very like common. I'm raising yeah. two sons yeah. and, a, and a, a big son, the mm -hmm. oldest right. son, which is the husband. Yeah. Yeah. But it's hard to actually uh, apply this to husbands because physically they're not quite as small and adorable so, you know, yeah. so yeah. it isn't quite as easy to apply these rules to mm -hmm. you know, my spouse but yeah it's useful I think. yeah I think as much as the method the language is really important oh, yeah. it's it all about to... delivery yeah right even not with not just with children but I think with friends with mm -hmm. co-workers trying to get some someone to do something your way mm -hmm. um, you, you know you can threaten them mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. you can demand it yeah uh, or, or you can expect, you know, you have these expectations. If they mm -hmm. don't do it, they're going to mm -hmm. get in trouble for it. Mm -hmm. Or you can ask, get the same results, but you can ask in a nice way. It, yeah. it really is all about how you how you ask. So you showed me this little thing in this book, and I think it, this book is kind of similar to that. Yeah. There's a chart where it tells you about um, what not to say right. and what you could say. So mm -hmm. let's give an example. So for example, uh, a lot of times they'll say, sit down, we're going to eat. Mm -hmm. Like, sit down right now because I've already told you five times right. you're going to eat, right? Oh, and here I say that all the time. <laughs> what? I, just, okay. I said that this morning. Okay, what can so I say? basically you're saying something like, we'll eat as soon as you're seated. Mm -hmm. So you're giving the child the choice mm -hmm. of sitting or not sitting, but we're going to start eating when you sit. Right. Yeah. And so it's pretty much saying the same thing. It's like, sit your butt down. <laughs> but the first one sounds sort of like a command. Yeah. Right. And you're sort of being a drill sergeant, right? Mm -hmm. Like, you know, sit down, we're going to eat now. Mm -hmm. But then, you know, you can also say it in a much nicer, sort of sounds much more caring too, yeah. right? Like, yeah. we will sit as soon as you're seated. So we're saying, we want you to sit down with mm -hmm. us. And once you are, you're important, right? So yeah. we want you to yeah. sit down with us. And once you do sit down with us, we're going to start eating dinner. Right. That's true with the Korean language as mm. well, because teachers these days are being taught not to use, uh, you know, directions and mm. saying "irera uh, torera," which is like "do this, do that." Mm -hmm. Instead of saying "anjara," um, for mm -hmm. example, sit down, mm -hmm. they will say "uri anjayo," which oh, is like okay. "we mm. will sit." Let's yeah. sit. Yeah. So it's much more softer, mm -hmm. and that's the tone of voice I hear all all across daycare centers, kindergartens. These oh, days. wow. Yeah. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I think with discipline, it, ha it has to include some love and gentleness. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think the child has to feel loved and not threatened right. for whatever method you're going to use. Right. And yeah. I think most importantly, it has to be logical. Oh, yes. Right? Going yeah. back to all of the methods that we talked about, the old school Korean mm -hmm. ways and the ways that we mm -hmm. use now and, and the yeah. way we, we see other parents mm -hmm. and our husbands our spouse is um, disciplining mm -hmm. our children, it really has to be logical to make sense and for it to be effective. If it's, right. if it's not logical, then it's just not going to work. Yes, but I think that is the hardest part it when is. you are raising kids because, mm. I mean, moms get tired and, and <laughs> we have emotions too, yes. right? We're human. 
So, yeah. But I mean, no one's perfect. If it doesn't work today, you're going to try again tomorrow. Mm -hmm. As long as you don't get caught in this sort of bad habit, yeah. I think, without realizing that there are other ways mm -hmm. and there are more effective ways. I think if you're willing to change mm -hmm. and you're willing to learn and mm -hmm. willing to talk to other moms and, and parents and your husband about mm -hmm. the best way mm -hmm. to um, sort of discipline, I guess, your child, then there can always be changes. Right, right. Okay, I think we're going to have to wrap up our talk today, but it was good. Mm -hmm. We talked um, a lot. We had to kind of... Um, <laughs> think back to our uh, childhood. I don't know if they were uh, all good memories, but um, yeah, it's good to think about these things. Um, for those of you who really enjoyed this episode, be sure to check out our last episode called The Truth About Korean Moms and Raising Kids. It's a really good one too. I'll leave a link down below. Thank you, Joyce, and thank you, Sue. Uh, can't wait for our next episode. Uh, and don't forget to like this video and leave any comments about future videos or things that you want us to talk about and yeah have yourselves an amazing week and i'll see you guys soon bye for now Annyeong. Annyeong.